Hey everybody, this is Tim Pichot, joined with John Snyson, The Economic Truth, and today we're just going to go over all, the, well, not, maybe not, probably not all the crazy stuff, because it'd be way too long, it'd be, you know, 15 hours <laughs> being over be here. That'd be a 24-hour news thing. <laughs> but, you know, it goes without saying that there's just probably have never been probably more news, uh, I think, since the last update that we've done than, than probably you know, any show we've ever done before. So, I mean, let's get, let's get into it. Let's go, you know, talk about what happened, you know, at the Capitol. And I guess, you know, first I really, I mean, one of the big main themes that you and I have talked about, you know, several times and, and particularly something that was, you know, front and center for me was the QAnon movement. Cause I recognize this as essentially a psyop right from the beginning, you know, never be in a movement that that makes it all about, you know, one person like, oh, we've got this, you know, magical guy named Q and yeah. he's in the, you know, the White Hats and the government and everyone else can just fall asleep. And don't worry, you know, Mike Pence is a good guy. I mean, I was calling out him as a scumbag going back before Trump even got in office. And, oh, you know, John Bolton, don't worry about him. You know, he's, you know, keep your friends you know, close and your enemies even closer. And Reince Priebus and all these, other, I mean, basically, you know, snake after snake after swamp monster after swamp yeah. monster after swamp monster. And, you know, and now we've, you know, you know, you had all of his kids where they already thought that, you know, that they, you know, whoever was going to be next, it was going to be, you know, Trump for four more years and Ivanka for eight years and Don Jr. for another eight years. And then maybe Eric Trump for eight years. And they're out there, you know, basically just thinking that they had it in the bag. And I was trying to warn people as an avid Trump fan back in 2016 and to qualify that statement with, you know, there was a, my main things really were central banking is the number one thing I cared about. That got way worse. I mean, he picked, picked Jerome Powell, so immediately jumped off the Trump train when he picked Jerome Powell. When he bombed Syria, which was all underneath you know false uh, pretenses, and I don't want to kick a man when he's down because you know Trump has done. I mean, he did. I mean, he's in an impossible job. There's no way he was ever going to satisfy everybody, but and he held up to the pressure extremely well. I don't know if anybody could have really held up to the amount of pressure that he held up to, but. And he represented something different, but at the end of the day, it was still a failed presidency uh, because, what, you know, you and I, a lot of people watching this, what do we care about? We care about the debt. Oh, yep, that's way worse. Uh, we care about, yep. uh, you know, central banking. Oh, yep, never. We had, you know, doubled the size of the Fed's balance sheet and now new powers that we never even thought would happen before. That's now been bestowed upon us. Uh, censorship issue. I mean, I was shadow banned off my Liberty Advisor Facebook page November 16th, 2016, before Trump was even in office. And and I would tell Republicans this, and they just made it sound like, oh, you know, who gives a shit about you not getting likes and, you know, MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. And it's not about me getting likes. It's about getting information out to the people, getting information out to the people, to you guys watching us right now. And in the future, aka now, we're not going to be able to get information out because this time has been squandered, which is why I then focus on blockchain. Lots of stuff going on in the Bitcoin world since we last spoke as well. I mean, sitting at like 38,700 right now and change, uh, you know, constantly fluctuating. And to me, it was really the Trump people, even though there were good intentions, and I'm not mad at people that were into Q and they just discovered the deep state and all this other stuff. I'm mad at the people that have been in this for like 10 years that should know better, that knew this was a psyop and kept going. Because if you have, you know, 200,000 followers, and unless you're me and willing to lose them all because you're saying stuff that people don't want you to say, uh, like I did sort of with Trump, where I was, you know, super pro Trump, but then was calling him out on things, mainly the, all the things that ended up screwing him. Uh, you know, I wish somebody listened to me about censorship. I wish somebody listened to me about central banking. You know, wish somebody listened to me about these false flag wars that we're in. But, you know, now I, th I think what had happened at the Capitol is essentially you had uh, that they all got, you know, duped into this where they thought, you know, Q was, you know, sort of like leading this charge. And you had some Antifa people who, you know, sort of led the opening, you know, salvo into the Capitol. And then the Capitol police just let people in. And then, you know, I'm sure you're there in this, in the, you know, the heart of the moment and the heat of the moment, and you're just, you know, going to go in. And then they all get, are going to get demonized as, uh, you know, terrorists. And now like right as we're coming online, cause John and I weren't planning on doing this. Like we were just talking to each other. I was driving home and we, I'm like, Hey, you know what? Let's just go get a video out since, you know, I've been, you know, super busy during the week. Uh, you know, especially, you know, as the stock market, everything going on, but let's flip over to the screen here and we see here it comes Patriot Act 2.0 aimed at the unwoke enemy within. And I just skimmed this article, but essentially it's saying that, you know, people that are, you know, domestic terrorists or, you know, essentially people like you and me who, uh, you know, people that are, you know, inciting violence because, you know, remember, you know, our YouTube 
page with, with Josh got kicked off for inciting violence and they want to make, you know, they want to basically criminalize, you know, people questioning the narrative. They want to yeah. criminalize, you know, conspiracy theorists. You know, I like to, you know, I, I'm not sure who made it up, but they called started calling people, you know, complicity theorists, you know, the, the Karens out there among us. And then, you know, the other big thing is we have uh, and it's funny because I told Josh Sigerson on the 5th, I go, you know what, man, I bet Trump doesn't make it till till February on Twitter that they're going to kick his ass off of there. And he didn't make it the next day. It was the very next day. He got it. Actually, he got a tw- I believe it was a. 12 hour ban at first and then he you know yeah, put and then out he got tweets. a message out and then they banned him again they they basically cherry picked uh like what they said was incitements of violence that nobody could see what he tweeted uh and said that oh yeah he, of course he did this and <laughs> this is the funny thing tim is when you're part of a cult you know let's let's just be blatant here uh, and said you that, know oh you yeah, take he, a lot of abuse you could take a lot of abuse you know which happened to the you people you know how many times haven't there been things that was going to happen and all this stuff uh and then of course you know it's just like a constant and there's people that are doubling down now not stopping saying that oh don't did you know that donald trump is in shine mountain you know hiding out with nancy pelosi's uh laptop you know with, hiding out with the easter bunny <laughs> but yeah, now no, we have parlor is being taken down and yeah. Guess what? I mean, Parler was taken down because they could take it down. And so, I mean, you're building on AWS. I mean, what are you thinking? I mean, do, I yeah. mean, we already saw Gab had got kicked off the Microsoft Azure cloud, and I think like two years ago. And I was one of the first people on Gab. I was on Gab in September 2016. But unfortunately, it basically became like this right wing hangout. And so I'm not trying to just preach the choir. I'm trying to get some information out. And so I've actually gotten to the point where I had I'd already told everybody I was get off Facebook before the end of the year. And then I got so busy dealing with like end of year client stuff. And I had, you know, trying to sneak in some last second, you know, stuff before, you know, because in, in the US there's certain, you know, things you got to do before year end for tax stuff. And I was trying to do, get as many last second things in as possible. And so I, I wanted to make more of like a bigger announcement. And so I made a video I filmed, I think four days ago about getting off of, uh, uh, Facebook, but unfortunately I didn't, I didn't release the video yet. And now it looks like I'm like some big Trump f- mega fan because I'm releasing this right as he gets kicked off. So I'm like, damn it. Like I, I, I you know, but, but now, but, but the good part is everybody now, you know, sort of sees this for what it is. And I was on Facebook in 2004. I mean, I, you know, let me know in the comments if anybody out there was on Facebook, you know, into, you know, in 2004 as well, but it's just, yeah, it yeah. yeah, it's just absolutely insane. And now parlor, I mean, so the, the answer to this is you need to have decentralized, solutions where you you own the infrastructure or the whole network inf- in, owns the infrastructure looks like you're in yeah. like a cloud server room right now or something and then that way they can't take it down and that could be done yeah. through blockchain technology and it's not guess what it's not gonna be done through parlor and for just to know for parlor this is like off the top of my head over here but uh the mercer family is one of the big and uh investors in there and people are like oh well you know who cares you know maga 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 you know you got to support parlor well the mercer family actually uh, they got into like a big spat with Trump two years ago in 2018. And so, and they distanced themselves from Trump. So now you have all the, the pro Trump people who are on parlor when the main investment investor in parlor fucking hates Trump. Like it doesn't make any <laughs> sense at all. And then they're, you know, and then they're also the ones who were behind Cambridge Analytica, which was like the biggest, one of the biggest yeah. data mining scandals there is. And then people are like, Oh, well, you know, their, their terms of service are pretty, uh, you know, rock solid and definitely secure. Really? Yes, You've got to give fast. up your, you got to give up your license and ID in order to become like one of the, I forgot what they call it, like a global citizen or some bullshit like that. And so otherwise you're a second class citizen on there. And I guess, you know, my shirt is kind of cut off, but it does say- Parlor? Are you talking about Parlor right now? Parlor. We're talking about Parlor. So sorry if I, you know, forgot to bring insane, that up. Though. Yeah, but that is insane. Like, you got to give up your ID to become a member. Like, so, so you don't have to in like the first. So, there's like a couple different tranches. So, like, you don't have to like in the regular account, but like, it's no, no, sort but of still. But in the but if you want like to become like uh, you know, like like not like you and I are like a blue check that, mark. Is that yeah, sort like, of like their kind of blue check mark. You got to give yeah. up your ID. And I had to give up my ID to Facebook in 2016 uh, because they locked me out of my own my own account, uh, thinking I was a Russian agent uh you know right around the time of the election and i was moving anyways so i ended up you know giving it up because i'm like all right well i'm moving anyways so yeah i i lost my blue check mark on twitter like back uh, when they said that oh we're gonna purge everybody but you know the celebrities and the politicians yeah i already got off i already got off twitter instagram yeah. will probably be sometime this week maybe even today facebook's gonna be right before the communist agent uh 
Biden. And it's not a thing about Biden. I was going to get off of Trump one anyways. It's just it's been weaponized against us. Anyways, I don't need to get into it because I've got a whole video that's completely dedicated to basically Facebook and Jack Dorsey can go fuck themselves. Uh, Parler. I mean, I think people should have the ability to go on Parler, but I think people should know that the end goal should be something that is immutable, that can't be taken down, that is open to both sides that isn't just I don't I, I want I don't want liberals being taken down and I know Parler has had a history early very early on of taking liberals down and like you know what boom you know what next I don't need to uh, you yeah, know be exactly. in a platform that is doing that for people and so I think I created one so you, if you want to find me the Liberty Advisor but you know I'm, I'm mainly going to concentrate my efforts on Float App and just so you know I do did buy some of their pre-sale tokens so I could do some you know advertising on there so I want to say what's up to everybody watching me on Float. And then if you guys aren't watching me or John and I on float, you can head to float.app or just go to, you can go to joinfloat.com. It's the easiest way to do it. Joinfloat.com. Easiest way to do that. And then uh, they don't have, I think they have an app for, what is it? Uh, Android, but not for Apple. And then some people are like, oh, well, they don't have an app. So I'm not going there. Uh, but yeah, they just kicked off Parler's fucking app from all the stores. Yeah. So at this point, <laughs> resor- they've only life. had like a couple hundred thousand dollars to build the whole thing out. And, you know, you and I are both friends with, with Aaron and Kingsley, who are, you know, the, the founders of this. So, you know, there is some, you know, vested interest in this. But, you know, as somebody that got shadow banned in 2016 and knows how this stuff works, you have to ultimately have a system where your data isn't being collected, your data isn't being harvested. There's other ways to other business models like like Mines, uh, like Brave Browser has, you know, like an more of like an attention based model. And there's just so many things out there that, that people could be doing. And I see yeah. some, uh, you know, I see some people in the chat. We got uh, Unum's enjoying the show. Uh, definitely appreciate that. I see people saying thoughts on Monero and you know what? I've got a whole video I did on Monero. It's actually my most popular bit shoot video I've ever done. And essentially I, from an investment standpoint, I think in the short run, we could see some uh, fireworks if it ends up getting delisted from more exchanges. But in the longer run, the people that buy Monero are different than the people that buy Ripple because yeah. the people that buy Monero are doing it because they hate the system. And so all of a sudden- they want they- Exactly. Yeah, and I, I don't know if people are speculating on Monero as much as they are. Now, I guess it's you know it's all speculation, but it's well, it, but it doesn't move as much as others. Uh, it has the past sure. day. It's gone up. I think it was like I don't know. I don't know. I'm not looking at the second. At one point, it was up like 27. percent Then I think it went down oh, the yeah. rest. Of, it went down the rest of the crypto market and is up like 12. I think in the past you know day or yeah. so. Actually, not probably just look at Coin Market Cap right now and see uh, which actually the coin markup is not definitely isn't like my favorite one to look at but I just have it up here Monero oh yep past oh seven days yeah up 25% up 17% yeah. but the reason why I like it it's one that can't be tracked traced or surveilled uh, you know we're seeing places like in China right now where China just came out with their own like uh, digital yuan uh, hardware wallet I think just the other day I read that uh, yesterday I believe and so it's I like Monero because it can't be tracked, traced, or surveilled. Eventually, all the central bank digital currencies are going to be the ones that they're pushing down everybody's throat. And then once everything's on the control grid, I think something like Monero in the long run, in my opinion, will go up uh, quite a bit in the long run because people are going to want privacy. People are going to value that. But, you know, I think, you know, I'm also big fans of, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I, I, I honestly think Bitcoin cash is more like Bitcoin than Bitcoin. But from an investment standpoint, I think Bitcoin being the brand name is going to do better. But Bitcoin cash does have better features in terms well, it's, of you know, it's, it's more of a currency. Like the, what happened to Bitcoin was that it, basically the, the, the blocks were way too small for it to be able to enable, you know, any uh, major fast transactions, right? Uh, there's also other ones, you know, one that is super fast is, of course, EOS. Um, uh, that's another one I really like, but that is that is like Ethereum, but it's way faster than Ethereum. So it's built on a uh, on a more decentralized, uh, it's uh, called Delegated Proof of Stake, where they have 21 servers that basically run the whole thing. And, and you could have people add into that system. I actually built the... Uh, the um, um, what was it called now? The uh, EOS project that I was a part of was built upon uh, EOS IO, actually, like that blockchain. Uh, it is the fastest, and it's actually the one that are doing by far the most um, 
the most uh, action and, and it's being used a lot actually. Uh, but, I mean, Ethereum's got such a huge, you know, first mover advantage and you oh, know, yeah, name brand course, yeah. recognition. And I mean, originally Vitalik was trying to do uh, basically smart contracts on Bitcoin, but got stymied. That's a whole yeah. other rabbit trail that we could spend hours going down. The first Bitcoin video I ever did on uh, my BitChute channel basically you know details a lot of a lot of that and things are going on and we see tyler in the chat is saying that he believes that uh i believe it's going to skyrocket when world governments really crack down on privacy coins and start confiscation of bitcoin via irs i have a monero wallet that you can send to a bitcoin address yeah so i believe what is that the, the uh, mona rujo or something like that i've never used it before uh but i remember hearing uh, i forgot what's his name uh rafael I, I... laverde at uh at the crypto vigilante you know was telling me about that but i think it's like m-o-n-e-r-u-j-o and like essentially what you can do is you can have you can send your monero to a, like a bitcoin address or you can or i think like vice versa and and somehow through their exchange and servers they take care of it in the back end i don't i've never done it I, you know just i heard some i saw that in the comments and thought that i would make a comment on that but yeah i mean they make I mean government makes lots of things illegal and a lot of times it makes stuff illegal and ends up getting more expensive and so uh well yeah that's that's the thing tim you know they they've tried to do this before we saw it in 2008 in, in zimbabwe they tried to ban gold and silver make it uh basically you had to face the death uh like a death if you actually used it but people just started using it because why would they use the, the failing currency that are losing value all the time it doesn't make sense uh and it's like the the lady in venezuela that had a safe government job over there uh, she couldn't you know, afford anything with the government salary because they couldn't keep up to the inflation. So what she did is she went and sold coffee on the streets and made like five times more of the, of the government salary that the government gave them because they couldn't keep up with the massive inflation that happened there. And, and so there's, there's a lot of ways that you need to protect yourself. And of course, you know, if you want privacy, it's interesting. When they started, you know, when I started looking at Bitcoin in 2012, 13, you know, they, they were talking about privacy back then you yeah know, they talked like, about a lot of things back then like yeah. scalability yeah. but i don't want to make this a whole bitcoin show because i think we yeah. could we could really yeah. do i mean there's just been so much going on i don't, I don't want to start losing people but you know what it is more effective rather i mean voting with your wallet by getting off i mean it's ironic that we're on youtube right now saying this but you know I, youtube is one of the places that i'm going to stay on but i'm encouraging people to go sign up for our email list go to the liberty advisor and i've been talking about this stuff forever and it's not like i'm blowing smoke up people's ass it's because i've been saying they're coming for people for the pet and sorry that i was you know four years uh too early on this but it wasn't really too early because it already came for me on on facebook and made it so that way you know like 30 people out of 32,000 would end up getting any notification Anyways, I think that's it for crypto. I love talking about crypto, but you yeah, know, just this is one more point that we could say. You know, if, if you're on any major exchanges and you believe that you know you're not being tracked, please get the hell out of there. I never use exchanges. I, I use actually. I, I'm lucky. I have a thing with uh, Paul Poy at uh, Edge Wallet that like he set something up that could buy stable coins without KYC. Uh, they're actually working on for Canadians to buy um, uh, Bitcoin without KYC through e-transfer through a bank. And they're going to make it. They're going to make it very, very hard to buy Monero in the future. And in the beginning, 100%. people will probably sell the news, and then eventually they're going to be like, "Oh shit! Well, I can't go buy back yeah. in very easily." And then it's probably going to skyrocket. Not investment advice. Only use stuff you're going to speculate with uh, money. And if you want to go buy Bitcoin, I mean, that's probably going to be the, the well, safer bet. Like but yeah, what you do is just put it onto your Exodus wallet, and then through Shapeshift you can get Monero easily. I've done that, so uh, there, there's ways. And I believe Shapeshift it. just stopped KYCing, and I would love to be able to interview uh, Eric Voorhees at some point because I really yeah. respect him, and, and I know that he's definitely you know a huge pioneer in the uh, you know in, in the industry. And we see see that uh, Tyler says in the chat says he accepts cryptocurrency for haircuts at his barber shop. That is absolutely awesome, and you know so we have the power to be able to take you know, our freedom back. And so by being on Facebook, you're giving your attention to the man and basically, you know, paying your attention to them and they're making a shitload of money off of us while then trying to then weaponize the information against us while then calling us terrorists. I mean, so at this point, anyone that's not a communist should not be on Facebook. I was on Facebook almost before anybody. And, uh, you know, I just happened to be 18 years old when it got rolled out at my university when I was a freshman. And I just happened to be at one of the first schools. And, you know, and somebody told me about it super early on. And I was 
you know, basically hitting on some girl that told me, Hey, go on Facebook. And I got on Facebook. So, you know, I got on super early, but I've seen how it's been weaponized against us and just, you know, social media in general is I'm going to try doing a lot less of it, which is why, you know, we're going to be pimping, you know, our own website at Tim and com and my site at the Liberty advisor show.com, which all brings it back to the same place. But, you know, getting back to everything going on at the Capitol, I mean, it seems like that this was such a well orchestrated psyop by, you know, that the, the deep state really did win this time where they had, yeah. you know, that they were able to use, you know, a few different Asian provocateurs, which is, you know, the oldest trick in the book. And, you know, and it's too bad that guys like Dan Dix are off, uh, you know, that, that his into the fire. And I don't know how you can see that now. Maybe you have to go to pressfortruth.ca, but, it, you know, it shows how at the G20 that they were basically yeah, the, the police. Were, and this was police at the time. Now, I don't know if, if this was the, but then again, the Capitol Police were letting people in, you know, there's old ladies yeah, getting it was pretty in. Obvious. But, you know, it's so funny how they blatantly, like, when you see those videos of people getting let in and then you see the videos like i i i've been stuck at a, a motel so i've been uh, <laughs> i've been uh, showing uh, i've been watching you know a lot of mainstream media and on cnn they basically like people are trying to breach into the into the capitol building and it's actually when they're getting chased out because i follow the whole stream and this is going on and it's actually when they you know like they came in to get people the hell out of the building you know, that's what they show us. And it was freedom. not an insur- <laughs> and it was not an insurrection. And, and, you know, I had told, you know, one of my good friends, uh, basically right the day before this, on the fifth, I go, listen, you know, they're going to have like two hours of, you know, debate. And then, you know, it's just going to have a little dog and pony show just to act like they give a fuck. And then what they're going to do is yeah. they're then going to just ram it through anyways. And so all these people, you know, hold down all these hell Marys, you guys should have been vocal, you know, four years ago about this stuff. And now it's, yeah. it's too late. We're going to have to go through some darkness and they're going to come after people like me and you and saying that, I mean, at least for me, I'm in the United States and U.S. citizens. Well, over I, here. I'm in Canada. So uh, <laughs> like, look at what we got here. Yeah. And so it's just, I mean, at this point, I mean, I don't even know how safe, you know, I feel having, you know, exposed, you know, a lot of this stuff over the years, but luckily there's, you know, so many people, you know, that are, you know, more, you know, prominent, which, you know, in some cases can be good for them, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I think people are more safer on the countryside, Tim, you know, to be honest with you, like when you're on the countryside, you, you don't have to interfere with the, the crazy public because there is, there is people out there that believe that you, me are terrorists out to murder them. Uh, because that's what they got in, uh, got told. And now uh, they're saying that this is, a, and I saw Nancy Pelosi saying it. This is, you know, this isn't about democracy. It's about whiteness, and basically, you know, this was an oh. insurrection to try to, you know, bring back slavery, and uh, and it's just absolute insanity, like the bullshit that we have to go through. And and, and what they're probably going to do is now you've taken this disenfranchised group of people. Let, you know, let's say eight hundred thousand million people were there. Who knows? I wasn't there. But you take this huge amount of people. Probably a hundred times more people were probably at home. So everyone that you know, for every one person that was there, there's probably another yeah, hundred people, people that are whatever, pissed off. Right? Yeah. And I wasn't even necessarily a Trump fan, but uh, you know, I did appreciate some of the things that he was doing, and he was up against a lot, and he was you know fighting a good fight, but he had you know some of the wrong tactics and surrounded by the wrong people who were there, unfortunately. But you know, I think he was trying to do his best, but he didn't have the information, being a 74 year old, to know everything that we know when it comes to central banking, when it comes to central censorship, when it comes to blockchain, when it comes to actual freedom. And so, you know, at the the end of the day, we know we, this country is absolutely going down the toilet, but you know, might as well make some money in in cryptocurrencies, not investment advice and in Bitcoin and some other, other places while we're at it. And, uh, I think some people asked in the chat about silver. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, silver as well, of course. Yeah. I I have silver, like I have physical silver. Come on. Like it's, it's a part of your, diversified portfolio you can't put all your eggs like the guys like max kaiser I'm, I'm just laughing a little bit at him because he's a little bit over the top now you know when it comes to i mean when uh, you're i mean he's got you know he got you know heavily invested so i mean there is a vested interest oh, and i'm course, sure he's yeah. got you know and he, he owns part of you know gold money too so you know he's you know gonna yeah you know, and he, he owns there. a bitcoin capital that i invested in which uh, owns shapeshift kraken uh in you know like a whole bunch of major exchanges actually through that as well and i i made like 10 times my money on that back i wish i had like two thousand three thousand dollars invested well, silver my, my um, yeah yeah my brother brought up today when i was uh you know he'd give me a call and, and he was saying that his fear with crypto would be quantum computing and i'm like well you know if, if there's quantum computing then your bank account's screwed too and so is you know every password every encryption and every everything and so in that case you know having physical silver would be quantum uh, yeah, quantum computing is very different though from like regular desktop computers. 
it's actually like meant to be like doing simulations of big things like simulating the whole universe or simulating like certain like when you simulating have like every bitcoin bitcoin private key i mean i don't know it's yeah it's... i guess you can too you have a, when you think about it but it's uh you know i i'm not too worried well, i mean there could be quantum on the other side as well securing it yeah. so you could have you know quantum versus well, quantum. Yeah, exactly. it's like you have it's like you have people you have like you have government agents and you have uh you know Google and things like that, where you know, even if they directed all their power at the network, they it would just make the algorithm get tougher, and, and no guarantee that they well, the win. IRS hasn't cracked uh, the Monero blockchain yet, you know. The, remember well, it was, it was almost insultingly government. low. I mean, they had what, like yeah. uh, five hundred thousand yeah. dollar bounty or a hundred thousand dollar bounty to try to crack it. I mean, if it's worth a billion dollars, why wouldn't they yeah, just use like it to crack least it themselves? Ten million, a minimum. You know, like come on, like don't don't insult people that know what they're doing. Yeah, I see Skerns in the comments. What's up? It says, I don't support Biden or Trump, really. And the censorship of anyone is BS. You know, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, I did support Trump in 2016. This last go around, I mean, I thought that the prime issues such as securing the vote, which is something I talked about and bitched about a lot and how that they're going to steal the vote. And anyone that saw my Anacapoco talk, which you can just go to the, the main page of my channel underneath speeches, we're at the very end of it, like at the 28 minute mark. I'm like, hey, I'm running out of time here, but just want to let people know something like unpopular. But, you know, I think Donald Trump has a very good chance of losing. And here's the reason why. And here's the six states. And then they're just going to use uh, basically steal a few different counties in these states to swing everything and game over. And then people are like, oh, no, well, Trump has this and this and that and look at the size of his crowds and look at this and look at that i'm like i don't care about any of that they're going to steal the fucking election and then no one wanted to listen to me and then you know right before you know trump is talking about you know mail-in voting and things like that and yeah i mean obviously that's you know part of the fraud but this could, things could have been worked on four years ago and now if you i mean that's why i voted for Kanye just so i could piss everybody off so i could even piss off the anarchists too but it was to say to show that this whole system is an absolute fraud. And even if you did have secure the vote, okay, you're voting for two puppets usually, or you're, okay, we're voting for the conservative, and then we and we vote in the conservative, and, you know, we add, you know, like eight or nine trillion dollars to the debt in four years, double the size of central banks, you know, act like more like liberals than even like Obama, pretty much. And you know what they are? You know what you could do, Tim, uh, to really piss politicians off is implement like everything on the blockchain from like the voting to actually what they vote on when they're in Congress, all this stuff. Like they would be uh, pretty scared to have that, you know, out in public. It, it is public, but you know, you got to really dig to find it these days. If you had that on the blockchain, you were really, really pissed them off because now they can't get away with a lot of stuff that, you know, they, they get away with, you know, look at how much money they get from, you know, the big pharmaceutical companies. I was just watching a couple of documentaries. One, uh, one on the Oxycontin, you know, uh, the Purdue family and the Oxycontin, you know, uh, catastrophe, you know, that was out there talking about, you know, uh, trusting big pharma with an experimental vaccine. Like, come on, <laughs> like people are totally trusting blasted. Jeffrey Dahmer. And, and then, of with course, your... like you look at all of the people that get money from lobbyists, you know, there was every single politician almost uh, in the Senate have gotten money from the pharmaceutical industry that they've taken. Uh, so it's. I, I, see, I don't know, like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love sort of like when Alex Jones went on uh, CNN with Piers Morgan and he said, uh, and he starts getting into the vaccines and the pharmaceutical companies. He's like, oh, that's your big sponsor. It's not allowed to talk about that. And that's when Piers, you know, then they, you know, had to yeah. cut the interview and, and, and sent that. And we see Kevin in the chat saying, if your vote mattered, they wouldn't let you do it. And I think that's something, I think oh, it was yeah. like a George Carlin, I think, uh, saying. And, and absolutely, I mean, you're yeah. voting, but even with Trump, I mean, a lot of the New World Order's agenda got pushed through with Trump in there. And so, yeah, he got out of the TPP, and yeah, he got out of the Paris Climate Accord, and yeah. But guess what? All that's going to be reversed in two seconds when uh, Kamala yeah. Harris uh, gets in there. And yeah, I know her name isn't Kamala, but that's but when you sleep your way to the top and you well, the, sleep with all these different politicians like Mayor Willie Brown to get to where you are, uh, you know, you're going to act like a whore, you're going to get treated like a whore. So, I mean, that's what I've got no respect for any of these you know, criminals who are in power. And it's not because she's a woman. It's because, you know, she is an absolute dirtbag that's putting other black people behind jail that is you know, basically a house slave, uh, you know, to put it nicely, it's, it's, she's just absolutely, you know, it's, and she's probably gonna be the president. I mean, I think that Biden makes it maybe a year and then we're going to have Kamala Harris and then, 
Maybe she'll pick some, you know, uh, transgender pink it, purple pony as her vice president or something. And I'm still, I'm still having my bet on, you know, the the event at the the White House, you know, happening where, uh, the, you know, suddenly uh, the only the lone survivor will be Hillary Clinton. Come on, Tim. I I, I think. Still <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, having Hillary be the <laughs> VP. That's but yeah. It, way, to ruin, way to ruin. Yeah, way to ruin. Yeah. Way to ruin. Way to ruin my weekend now. And so then <laughs> we have. But, uh, yeah. Biden is a total like Hillary Clintonite, uh, of course. Like he's a part of the Obamas and and uh, and that whole system uh, of control, of course. And uh, when you look at that, that actually goes right into Canada because the Canadian Liberals and the uh, Democrat Liberals uh, of the United States actually use the same camp- campaign teams. And I got that confirmed from the best friend of Justin Trudeau. Well, think about well, look about the Great America. Reset: is Build Back Better, same thing as Biden, Build Back Better. But let's let's yeah. switch to what the next ten yeah. days, uh, uh, you know, could possibly look like right now because this is going to be absolutely yeah. insane. But we have Trump <laughs> Trump impeachment vote could come as soon as Tuesday, according to senior Democrat. And so it's not just enough to have Donald Trump getting out of the office in ten days. They need to make sure they never have a guy like him in there ever again. And so they're going to put this guy's head on a pike, do whatever they can to do to, you know, and it's funny because at the same time, you know, Biden's like, we need peace and we need healing and we need unity and we just need to come together and stop the divisiveness. And then boom, they go and kick all the Trump supporters off all these different social media platforms. And boom, we're going to start demonizing everybody. and We're going to make everything about race and boom, we're going to go and just absolutely get all this, you know, division out there. And then there's talks of that There's talks of 25th Amendment. And so thank you, all the Republicans out there who were supporting guys like Mitt Romney, supporting guys like John McCain, supporting guys, and not even guys, these are effing scumbags, globalist traitors. And that's not to say that even Trump is some guy, but these guys are so blatantly bad that it's, and even Mike Pence were like, oh, well, it's because you're not as smart as Trump and he's got some other plan. No, Mike Pence is a fucking scumbag that I've been calling a scumbag right from day one. And it pisses me off when all these Republicans are going after me, calling me a libtard for pointing all this shit out four fucking years ago. And it's just absolutely, I mean, it's just so frustrating right now. But you know what? It's good that, you know, Bitcoin's going up. It's good that other stuff, you know, people should have listened to me on that before. But, you know, the fact that people couldn't see this and that I was getting attacked, you're getting attacked, other people getting attacked for calling this stuff out because we weren't part of this whole cult. And especially when most of these people didn't have the balls to go stand up for Trump in 2016 like I did. And then they're, you know, once he's in, once he's elected, then it's safe for everyone to come out and then he can go act all tough. But now what are we at? We we get complete censorship, can't get any ideas out. And, you know, and then what type of, and and there's going to be, I mean, I'm not calling for any violence but the thing is, the fact of the matter is just reading the tea leaves here is that there's going to be a whole lot of bad stuff going on you know economically we've got the mother of all stock market bubbles going on a huge amount of and then we got jerome powell then testifying on capitol hill that oh there's no correlation between you know pumping money into the economy and the stock market uh you know there's yeah you're just you know i think back in you know january they were calling us last january calling us QE conspiracists. And then it's, it's just, you know, I'm sorry. We didn't you know have any script. Yeah, we, ne- we never have any script that we're going to say today. I know we're all over the place, but, you know, look at the, you know, right now going on screen, the euphoria model, You've, the, the euphoria in the stock market has never been higher. But you know what might happen is they can't afford to let the stock market to go down because everything is intertwined. They can't afford to have the bond market go down because every little thing is intertwined. It's all intertwined with the derivatives. And if one little domino falls, they all fall. So they can't even have it go down like five or ten percent because we get complete panic mode. And so every single time the market goes down, they're going to pump more money, pump more money, and eventually they're going to kill the whole fucking thing, probably except for Bitcoin. So thank you very much, Jerome Paul. And but, it, but the thing is, there's going to be a whole lot of, you know, this is why people are poor. This is why people are enslaved. This is why the middle class is going to the lower class. And and then you get, you know, people like, what, the, what's her name? Janet Yellen? Has, is- the Fed has the audacity to come out and say that they're fighting inequality. They're the biggest fucking perpetrators of inequality in the world. The yeah, Janet Yellen was at Boston like a couple, like a year or two ago. And then how much money did that bitch end up making? Like she's made like what, like seven, like seven million dollars last year. Give me a break. She hasn't been right about one fucking thing. She said never going to be another recession in my lifetime. Well, I mean, how more wrong could you be? And then now you're the head of the treasury, which should really be called the head of the debt. Uh, and and so there's nothing. I mean, and then she, yeah, she gave a speech, I think, in Boston a year or two ago saying, I've dedicated my life to figuring out why there's income inequality. Yeah, because of the fucking Federal Reserve. That's why there's income inequality, you dumb fucking bitch. I mean, it's just how do people not understand 
that, I mean, it's just like, what are you, five years old that you can't see a correlation between printing money? It's like you go in a monopoly board and you, all of a sudden you give everybody five times more money and people start bidding up properties for more money. It's not because things are people are better monopoly players. It's because you just threw five times more money onto the board. That's why. And it's, But the thing is, you can have the stock market go to infinity. You can have Bitcoin go to infinity. You can have all this stuff keep going to infinity because they keep they can't let Humpty Dumpty go down until it's a coordinated, complete coordinated attack where then they bring in the great reset and then they tie it into universal biggest income and then they say because i started calling Kamala harris and all these other people bitches that i'm a terrorist and then boom you know everything is going to go you know i mean i'm not like insinuating that i a boom is you know they're gonna be like, oh he said boom take it out of context he's gonna you know commit violence no it's because well, this whole thing is going to be going down it's all planned it's all orchestrated it's all going to be underneath the great reset and you know basically we've been documenting this the whole time for you know the last four years of been making videos and we are now at the precipice where it's done being nice it's done if people are gonna get mad that oh he said fuck well fuck you if you don't like me saying fuck because this whole country's fuck is because of the fucking fucks that didn't listen to me about john mccain especially here in arizona that didn't listen to me about doug ducey that didn't listen to me about mitt romney that didn't listen to me and you and you guys too i mean i'm sure the people listening to this right now uh because we are beyond the point of playing nice beyond the point and i am not even a trump fan like i am not like i i, I didn't i wasn't at this thing like but I also know that the Democrats are basically all communist agents over here that are absolutely hell bent on destroying everything. Whereas at least the Republicans at least are trying to do good things, but they just you know don't understand the whole freedom aspect of it, which is why I call them finos, freedom in name only. And this is part of the reason why I didn't want to do a video the past couple of days is because I've been too pissed off because all these different things. I mean, what's the main thing I've been really? Well, we had G. Ever Griffin on. What was the first fucking thing I asked him? I asked him. And so here's what my main idol got him on and i have to go ask him about a QAnon question about trump when i know that that was something that was sort of piss him off because it was that important to understand that the q was a complete fucking psyop and every single q influencer out there who has any you know gravitas whatsoever should never be listened to again and they should be absolutely shunned from the whole entire conspiracy world for being too fucking stupid to not realizing that they were in a psyop the entire time and now we're fucked so thank you QAnon people that wanted to get you know all your little fame all your little fifty thousand hundred thousand followers of all your little stupid fucking channels because now we're all fucked because you guys thought it was a great idea to believe in a psyop i mean i mean a five-year-old could have figured out that that was a psyop and, and it's no offense to the people that are like one to three years into this no offense to them but the people that were into this for five ten twenty years you guys should have known better you guys should have known better and now no one should ever listen to you guys again because that was a major league fuck up and now we're in the situation that you guys got goaded in to go into the capitol storming everything uh you know through a psyop and it just oh yeah and going so frustrating up, you know like the white up. remember we had that conversation with ed you know where he enlightened us on the was it the 70s or 60s i forgot but when they had this person, the white dove that, you know, were the guy, a person with all the answers and, you know, with the solution for everything. It's just so interesting because what happened was that like a lot of libertarians that sold out and were stupid enough to believe in this, they actually... Oh, the libertarians are just like, you know, making, you know, talking about how great Black Lives Matters is and let's just have little, you know, let's just, you know, make little snide comments at Trump and just, you know, be, you know, part of the team over here and maybe Rachel Maddow will invite us on, you know, so they're, you know, so libertarians, you know, deserve a lot of blame on this too. And so, but guess what, you know, the answer to everything is decentralizing everything, it's restoring freedoms and now... I mean, everything, I mean, I think, I mean, I think all this is gonna be good news for Bitcoin because I mean, there's, there's gonna be so much money printed over the next few years. I mean, that's why the stock yeah, market is going uh, up. It was the uh, Biden just came out and said that there are going to be multiple trillion. Uh, and, and yeah, actually, I do have that right article now. somewhere up here. Let me, let me try to, up oh, here it is. Boom. Uh, the price will be high. Biden calls for trillions in fiscal stimulus. When I, I think, Tim, too, as well, like what's going to happen is the central bank is going to have to come out and start buying other assets. They're going to have to buy those CLOs. They're going to have to buy the uh, buy stocks directly. Like in, in the, I, it was interesting. I looked up in Norway what has happened with the central bank in Norway. I looked at the balance sheet and they bought a crap ton of stocks uh, to prop up the Norwegian stock market, the Oslo Börse. And so it's it's just really interesting to see how around the world a lot of central banks didn't only like go into and buy up like what they did in in the United States they bought you know a third of or what was it two thirds of all the mortgages that are out there through the derivatives the mortgage backed securities that the Federal Reserve put on their balance sheet 
Uh, there's been central banks out there that have been doing everything. They tried to prop up the economy by buying stocks directly and everything. And that's where we're going. It was the Japanification. I wrote about it four years ago now, uh, where I warned that the Fed will own everything and nothing because they're going to have to buy every single asset to keep on propping this scam up in order to, you know, have uh, have a monetary system that will look like a de- it's a dead zombie. But you got to like to keep it alive. You got to keep on, you know, uh, basically um, pumping blood through the body, uh, you know, even though it's dead. Well, speaking of uh, dead people pumping blood to the body, and you you can't see this, John's, but I, I got a this uh, gif that just shows like these kind of like zombie NPCs printing money from this uh, zero hedge article. <laughs> I did uh, yeah, no. I did you know, I did uh, treat myself for uh, <laughs> for for Christmas and bought the zero hedge premium, so that way I don't have to read read any ads over here. So and also well, you know what you got to support people out there who you know that you believe in, and I've been reading you know zero hedge, which yeah. you know sort of you know probably you know, probably would have gotten into Bitcoin a lot earlier had I not read, been reading Zero Hedge because, you know, they were you know, sort of against it for a long time. But anyways, you know, you know, there was, you know, there was ties to Bilderberg and Bitcoin and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, that's a whole nother subject. And, you know, I've talked about that many times before. But this issue of censorship, this issue, I mean, all the major issues that I really cared about, they all got worse. They, every single one of them got way worse underneath yeah. Trump. And then if I want to go talk about it, now I'm the libtard. Uh, maybe not now, maybe now they finally have come around. But, you know, it, but, you know, I could have been a lot more popular had Hillary gotten in. Could have been a lot more popular had I just went along with Trump the entire time. But you know, it's, it was more about you know restoring freedoms, de- getting decentralized solutions. It wasn't about oh Donald Trump's in. Let me just pound my chest, maga maga maga, and all these people <laughs> just pissed me off so much. And they, they uh, believe in a system that is dying. Like look at what happened at the end of the Roman Empire. The 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 uh, senators started killing each other. Like that's where we're going, Aaron. It's, well, uh, I'm, I'm well, sorry to say we can, that. Well, we can. It's... Well, we can. We can only hope if they all start killing each other, because I mean, they're all <laughs> bad, except for well, maybe if you know Rand Paul can go sneak out and the other 99 go all attack each other. Uh, you know. No, it's, uh, this is how like uh, how a system works. Is at the end of uh, a monetary system, Tim, you will have massive turmoil because there's going to be such a massive uh, divide in uh, income inequality, you know, between the rich and the poor. Uh, and of course, like when the debt of all the middle class that, you know, has been held up by mostly debt uh, and all their assets, when that collapses, you know, you, you're going to have a lot of disenfranchised people. And think about what happened in, in the 30s, you know, with the, the Weimar Republic uh, hyperinflation uh, and then, you know, the uh, election of Hitler after that. Um, so you have a lot of that happening. Uh, because of the massive turmoil, that's why you had white supremacists inside of the uh, the group of people that stormed the, the the White House there, and then they, you know, uh, because they're opportunists, they want a revolution, they want to topple the government, both sides, you know, and Tifa and everybody's calling for violent revolution and overtake over the government and same with the neo Nazis. But it's funny, like the neo Nazis. Uh, what do you got to remember if you go and look at some of the leaders? They're actually like one guy is running the Workers Party or something. It's called. So he's a total socialist. He's not a, they call him a right wing. You know, how can you even call him a right wing? You know, what, what you really need to call everything is everything is left wing. And uh, me and Tim are over here on the right side as anarchists, as anarcho capitalists, uh, you know, calling everybody. Well, the better, the better way of putting it is instead of left and right, it should be, you know, tyranny versus freedom. And yeah. essentially, I forgot what I put for tyranny. Essentially, that on the tyranny side, you have the Democrats and Republicans that are, you know, just trying to outdo do each other over here with the Democrats probably being a little bit fr- obviously closer to tyranny. And then, but n- neither one of them are close to freedom at all, at all. Exactly. And so, you know, I hope Trump could do some things to maybe, you know, redeem himself, like, you know, freeing Ross Albrecht, which, you know, I think I, I was, you know, we've got some Hail Marys. I helped put one of these in play with one of my friends that had one of his friends was very close with Trump and we got a letter uh, that we hopefully, uh, you know, Trump is aware of Ross. Uh, and there's a couple of people at the DOJ right now who are basically blocking it. And if he doesn't get out in the next 10 days, he's basically going to be stuck there for at least the next 12 years, if not the rest of his life. So, you know, there is, you know, it can, if he can just throw us one bone over here, you know, I'd really appreciate that because I know that if he did that, you know, I would, you know, at that point, you know, be behind him I and mean, not to say I'm just going to you know, excuse everything that he does, but uh, you know, I mean, just come on, just throw us a bone over here. And then we're seeing articles over here right now where WhatsApp is forcing us- users to share personal data with Facebook and Elon Musk is urging people to switch to signal a smaller encrypted <laughs> messaging app. And so even so you've got Instagram, 
which you know basically said, hey, if you have uh, if you're still using Instagram after December 20th, then any text message, any website you visit, all your call logs, uh, we have access to your camera, we have access to all of your pictures, access yeah. to everything, and it's ours. They also said that if you have a screen name, so let's say let's say my screen name is the Liberty Advisor, they're going to say, okay, well now you can't they like own that and you can't make like a, the Liberty Advisor com for instance so i guess i was lucky that my instagram was the underscore liberty underscore advisor so i'll be getting off that i've already gotten off already gotten off twitter uh getting off facebook uh you know here uh sometime before the 20th but it's just at this point how much more proof do people need before they'll finally go and do something and and i think the problem is you got all these republicans who are just like oh well you know fox news said it wasn't rigged and I'm just going to go back to, uh, you know, drinking my, you know, Miller High Life and thinking that everything is going great. And, uh, you know, the TV is telling me that, that Trump is a bad man. And so and so the average Republican is just, you know, pretty much a beta male cuck, too, that's not willing to do anything. And so, yeah. you know, this is why we're well, in this. People were in La La Land, you know, during the Trump administration because they were, you know, dumped into a cult uh, and uh, started believing in that cult. Uh, so that's the problem. And then, and then of course, uh, like nothing happens. Uh, rights are deteriorating slower, you know, than, uh, than they did during the uh, Obama administration, of course. But it's, it, it's again, you're, you're putting your trust in a person, in a, in, a, in a system that is basically working against you. You know, the, today's politicians, Tim, are nothing uh, like a feudal, feudalist system. Wait, did, did, our, did our viewers just run out and go buy Monero? Because I see Monero is now up uh, 21.64% in the past 20 uh, I think it. I think when we started the broadcast, it was like 170 or 167, and now it's 180. So uh, I don't know if people yeah, went there out there and pumped Monero while we were talking, but uh, it's up, uh, you know, quite a bit right now. So yay for people out there who own Monero. And and the thing is, people are like, oh, that's where drug dealers and terrorists use. And Zach, if you're listening to this, can you go to my BitChute channel and post the Monero video in the link because it was I did it with this uh, PhD from. Uh, it was this Asian dude that was a PhD from. Yale, and I think uh, not that I yeah, he's care been about down Yale. Too, and Arcapulco a couple of times. That guy. Yeah, and then he was a, I think he was an MBA and yeah. from Harvard. He's a, a dual Harvard and Yale, you know, super high level degrees, statistician guy. And so you've got you know him and I talking about Monero and the, all the legitimate use cases and why as a business owner you'd want to use Monero over Bitcoin. And anyways, I'm not going to repeat it all there because you guys have it in that video. And I am coming out with a cryptocurrency course. Uh, it's not going to be like a trading course. It's going to be you know going over you know everything from you know basic. Uh, uh, you know, how to go and buy it and things to look out for and how not to get scammed and how you can store it. And and then it's going to be, you know, over to advanced things like how does somebody, you know, end up, you know, inheriting your crypto and going into taxation issues and going into, you know, potentially some advanced trust issues as well. Um, but it's just, yeah, yeah. I see some of the people in the chat. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. And I want to say hi to Ricky. I'm not sure if he's still here or not, but Ricky Verandas of a uh, host of the union of unwanted checked in. Uh, he was saying some, I try, can't find the chat now, but he said out of all the 26 letters, Q is my least favorite. Uh, someone asked, when did Q start? Actually, Q, Q is my favorite. I have Q everywhere in my house because my wife's name is Quentin. <laughs> the very first thing that I thought of when I heard of QAnon, very first thing is I happen to know that the internal spy group at the NSA, the watchers of the watchers, I happen to know was the Q group. And so I'm like, QAnon? And then the NSA is this all-seeing person that knows everything that's going on and the head of the NSA uh, yeah. like thing is is the q group and like it just seemed like it was way too coincidental for me and this is boom this is like the first time i heard of q that's immediately what i thought of and uh you know what i should just always go with my gut instinct because it's it's right about 99 percent of the time and and i think at this point i mean i i, I the thing is it sucks being right because i'm, I'm right about really bad shit so it's, and i'm not happy to be oh yeah the destruction of everything right on <laughs> right on par just like i thought it was going to happen you know let's go take a victory lap on this because it's not something i'm happy about sorry for you know losing it anymore but you know it's it's just like it, it, there is a thing where if you know we're saying this information calmly you know we might have 10 people watching us but you know if you show emotion then you might have 40 or 50 who are watching right now so appreciate that appreciate everyone who's hitting the likes appreciate well, everyone who's watching us on library off because it's like this is just our passion is that we want people to be free individuals and if you are not going to let us do that, well, we're going to very much, very, very passionately talk about that at any given point. And you can't stop us, no matter what, who tried to say and tried to censor us, tried to come out there and intimidate us. We're not going to stop, you know, voicing our opinion because we know that we're 100% on the right side of 
uh, you know, history uh, being on the side of freedom because the other side is tyranny. And, and <laughs> Dude, that Santa behind you is so creepy. So Rika just, uh, Rika just uh, commented on that. So there's, uh, let me, you know, it's on just, uh, okay. So we've got the Santa Claus over here. Santa, yeah, that is pretty creepy. <laughs> needs to get some like, conditioner, he's, he's get some a, conditioner for his spy. beard. You, you know what's interesting? Like, uh, we kind of talked about, we didn't talk too much about COVID and everything, uh, but I'm at uh, a what's uh, that? reserve. Uh, <laughs> I'm at a reserve, actually. Oh, and Zach just there. posted that bit shoot video, Making the Case for Monero. It's on the, yeah. the live chat right now. Definitely recommend you guys check that one out. It's my top. This is like two year, two or three years ago. I had 1,600 views on it, which for a bit shoot video back then was like for my little little channel. Oh, but it's a very, very important topic and a very smart guy that you're interviewing. So everybody has to see that video to really understand what Monero is all about. It was day seven of being down in Acapulco and I was super hungover. And all of a sudden it was a gorilla interview. I see him walking by me. I didn't even know. I forgot his name. And I just, boom, grabbed him to do an interview. No notes, no anything. And actually... Oh, like, as, I, as I'm going to interview him, I'm like trying to, I'm like, I'm like, shit, what's his name? And I just remembered him. Like, it's Daniel Kim, and then uh, which I just remembered yeah. right now, too. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it ended up being probably one of the better ones because mainly because I just let him talk the whole time. Yeah, I, got, I just got a price alert that Monero is up at 181.45 now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so well, I mean, maybe, funny yeah, that we're maybe talking heavily about Monero and suddenly it just goes through the roof. <laughs> yeah, no, we got some, uh, you know, maybe we got some big whales out there watching to make it, making it go up. But, you know, but I do think that yeah. when it eventually, and I'm saying when, when it eventually gets delisted and eventually is made illegal, it's probably going to be bad. And then whatever means that you could. Well, the thing is, like, you're still going to have it on, on other wallets that are not a part of the exchanges. Like I have, yeah. like in my Exodus wallet, you know, they have Monero. I can transfer Well, they can still anywhere. come after, they can still yeah. come after Shapeshift. They could come after, uh, which, uh edge and been forced you know paul to get it off there i mean i don't i don't know the details of exodus but i'm sure they can make life difficult for that as well uh and but yeah i mean yeah, they, I, they, I wouldn't be holding it on an exchange at kraken i mean i mean nothing against <laughs> kraken but i mean if they make it illegal i mean they're probably not going to be able to give you a chance to withdraw it because i mean with ripple that was a different issue where it was an sec i uh, I've lost like i i had that happen so like yeah it's not gonna happen like if they make it illegal that 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 is gone so, like, good luck with trying to take that out if they make it illegal. That happened to, I, I forgot what it was. It was a, a, a so two or three tokens that I had on there uh, that suddenly they, they listed them. And, then, you know, of course, uh, the, there was no way of actually getting that money, like the, the tokens back out of the exchange at the time. So, of course, they're going to do that. Yeah, the easiest uh, way to get Monero, someone just asked, uh, and I don't work for them. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I'm not making any yeah. money off of this. But uh, if you go to edge.app, there's an edge wallet, and you can transfer Bitcoin into there. You can transfer, uh, you know, bit, like Yeah, Edge as well. Like I, I use, as I said, I use Edge, and I will actually be using Edge, to be honest with you, a lot more when they get their uh, e transfer. So you can e transfer from your bank over to. Uh, to to them for actually for Bitcoin I think they have a, I know they have like a wire thing there I've I've never used it for that I've only yeah I've it's only different here in Canada like they, they they do have some wire stuff and uh, and everything but it's uh, the the only thing that they're they're working on here for Canadians that I am uh, to buy directly Bitcoin because now I buy actually so this is how I get away with the KYC I buy. Um, that stands for know your customer so like having to give up your id and personal yeah, information so that's, I, what, that's what john's referring to yeah exactly it's giving up all your identification uh and it's part of the anti-money laundering stuff that they pushed in to try to take away more of your rights so you don't you know can do anything with your currency but what i do is i i transfer money in from the e-transfer into uh a stable token stable token you know it's hilarious that name on them uh, and then I go over uh, to uh, so people real uh, so people know stable coin basically means something that's backed by the dollar so yeah, it's going to so have not. a one to one just because I want I don't want because all these vernacular there's people out there that don't necessarily know no, what that exactly. means exactly so. I know it. and it's hilarious that they actually call it a stable token so I take that stable token transfer it over to my Exodus where I do shape shift it into Bitcoin Litecoin Monero whatever I want to uh, there as well and, you're saying all these and, acronyms uh, shape shift is basically an exchange where you can you know trade one asset for another and it's yeah, called shape shift and i believe cross assets exchange and so yeah. because the thing is people if they're just hearing this for the first time they might have no idea what shape shift or cape so i just want to make sure that all these big words are using yeah. that i back things <laughs> up and right now there's people that know all this 100%. stuff they're probably like shut the fuck up tim let him talk but i the thing is but there's also people that <laughs> no, also have no idea what you're saying too so yeah. that's, no, the only, that's, that's the only reason why out there. so it's it's very important to you know try to give people a, you know more detailed uh, view and and uh, actually so they can kind of Try to understand because like 
first time I sit down with a lot of people, I, I do like a lot of consulting with people. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for them to grasp, you know, uh, so you try to make it super simple when you try to explain things uh, to people that get started. And, and uh, it takes usually like what I found, it takes like four or five times just to repeat it and kind of like um, and make them like chew on it for a little while. And then they unless they work for the government, really then. get it like after that. But it, it's got to be a repetitive thing. You know, it's like the three. Uh, you got to repeat it three, th- three times kind of thing in marketing to get a message across. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that's what happens. But yeah, no, it's, um, it's important to like try to get into uh, crypto as fast as you can because what, what's coming out next? There's every single country in the world right now, almost central bank is working on the central bank digital currency. And when we get to that point, they're going to clamp down on crypto right away. Uh, and just and so we know, a central have- bank digital currency is basically where yeah. you have the, like a Federal Reserve dollar that instead of, you know, having the dollar that's in your wallet right now or on your, you know, regular, you know, means, there's going to be a system where everything is basically gone, going through the Fed as a, as a clearinghouse. Yeah, through central banks, And then they're exactly. going to say, oh, you didn't get your vaccine. Boom, you're not getting your $2,000 a month <laughs> universal basic yeah. income or 10000 like Kamala Harris or sorry, Kamala Harris, how she said that back in June that she wanted to have a $10,000 per month universal basic income. And so, you know what? Why am I passionate? I'm passionate because this is the, this is the dumbest you know, set of ideas ever. We're incentivizing people not to work is what well, we're doing. But that's Tim, that's what happens at the end of any monetary system. The dumbest ideas ever comes out at that time because they're desperate. You know, there's no way out of this. Like they can't uh, increase interest rates. You know, they, they actually slow down their purchases now on uh, the uh, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has gone down the last two weeks. Uh, but they're still buying. They've talked about uh, tapering. I haven't really paid too much attention to no, that. I figure, it, I figure, it's I figure it's all like, noise. They're not going to really do it. So, w- what can you tell us about that? And tapering means they're, they're selling, like, like selling off some of their assets. Yeah, if you want to actually go to my repo, if you want to show people that, like on my website, theeconomictruth.org, you can go in and click on the repo uh, operations and then get the uh, charts that I chart every single day that uh, the, with the information from the. Uh, Federal Reserve when it comes to the repo interventions to the treasury purchases, mortgage-backed security purchases, commercial mortgage-backed securities. But then also in there, I have something very uh, cool. I have the, the data from the exchange stabilization fund, which they use as a subsidiary to do the uh, all these uh, different like Main Street lending facilities, all these different programs. They use that. So I actually have that data there as well. To, what, what page uh, should we go into? This is the infogram about the Fed repo operations. Yeah, exactly. So you go into that, and then if you go to the main balance sheet, you could see. But what has happened is that they're, they're kind of like just a tiny little trickle down. There's nothing big yet. They're still buying uh, uh, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities and, and commercial mortgage-backed securities. So they haven't stopped it, but it's uh, it's like they're in uh, like a little bit of a low down. So they actually sell more back out in because like of everybody believing that everything is fine, people are actually – buying the toxic garbage that the federal reserve reminds, reserves like the, reminds you of the lego mu- reminds you of the lego movie everything is awesome everything yeah, is I, cool uh, when you're part I of the team that before everything that, is that awesome is so, if you love that, joe that is, biden i think we should just put that out and, and play it you know until people actually think it well uh, then they'll, then they'll take it then the they'll take us down for copy then they'll take us down tim. for copyright so i mean that's no, I, I, tim come on i i think that's the next wave of propaganda it's just they're gonna just keep on playing that on every single channel you own nothing there, you've got no privacy and you've never <laughs> been happier because everything is awesome I, <laughs> I have anybody this is funny so on uh, ernest hancock's one of our buddies uh, fantastic activist he's like been on this for decades upon decades i saw a post that somebody created dr evil into uh klaus Klaus. schwab now it's like the best ever so uh, we have it in our chat you actually need to follow us on our discord channel as well uh where i i post a shit ton of stuff every day almost uh as i can and we have a lot of great interactions there talking about crypto talking about money economics gold silver uh, and the economy, COVID. Uh, so we tried to have a, a good discussion group that, you know, we tried, I, I tried to put out as much, uh, you know, might not be, you know, pro uh, what we're talking about news, but at least I want to put a lot of news out there too that are, uh, you know, what you see mainstream media, but then I also put out like Tim put a lot of uh, zero hedge stuff, which is great. And then we you got to post both sides so people can see what they're talking about because it's such two different worlds. 
Uh, you know, when you really and, I, and I haven't been up. as active, but I imagine as I get off of uh, Facebook and these other time sucks yeah. that I will be probably more active on there and also more active. I mean, just, you know, there's only this, you know, so many hours in a day, and, but there's a lot of articles that are going up there. So, you know, if yeah. you're in the article section, there's, you know, a huge amount that's uh, going up. I think in the past year, I think I've saved like 2000 and you've saved like 5000. So if you want to know, yeah, uh, close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to know, you know, what's going on, you know, things that we're reading that's what you can know what, what's going on. And just, you know, just a small amount ends up making it on there. But, you know, what are the you know, important things do you guys want to talk about? So we got some people in the comments over here. You know, what are the things you guys like to know about? I see people talking about Gab. Uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, I was on Gab early on. Uh, you know, I think, you know, I support what Andrew Torb was doing. But I think that, uh, you know, just became sort of like a right wing hangout, you know, type area. And I don't want to just be in a more of a right wing area. I'd rather be in more of an anarchist, voluntarist, you know, yeah, hey, every, everyone's alive uh you know everyone's on there and, and having you know a decentralized options and then having you know having content creators have a way to get monetized i think is you know also important I've, I've actually this channel right here could be monetized but i have not monetized it because then if you get it monetized then they basically have you by the balls more where they can oh, then course, uh yeah. you know kick you off so i mean we're also not you know i know we're not big enough so i guess that's like the one good thing of uh you know being you know talking about issues because yeah, we're kind of under the radar now you know and me and josh got you know banned of course and you were on the channel too as well uh so it's it's important that like we're under the radar so we still put our stuff up there but it's not that we really care if we got was the leader or not because it probably will over time uh over the next uh, you know and that's why i've got everything happened. backed up on a private server every every video backed up on another I have multiple different private servers. Multiple, everything's backed up on library. Everything's backed up on I mean, most things backed up on library. Most things backed up on BitChute. We've got most of the things, you know, you know, in uh, this, you know, other private uh, yeah. uh, video streaming software that I've, I've, I'm paying extra for to put on the email list. So, you know, good. Take us down from YouTube and then make us more popular somewhere else. I almost, I almost sort of wish they do that and just make my job easier. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One last thing too is I, I'm really trying to search for, I'm not time yet, but if anybody could give us a really good program that acts like Discord, we would probably like to transfer over to that. But it has to be a fully decentralized type of solution, uh, or else it's not going to be. It's yeah, gonna they're going to eventually start coming for Discords or coming for people's Telegram channels. Yes. They're, they're. It's like it's like <laughs> it reminds me of the guy. It's like hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your dog. They're out here raping everybody. Well, we go. They're coming for everybody over here. I mean, not to make a joke of that, but. Um, you know, I, I did see that video the other day and, and laughed again because it's even more ridiculous than the, the first time works. I saw it. If you really understand what they're doing, they're doing what exactly is going on in China. And I had a big presentation on that. You could go to the redpillexpo.org if you want to, uh, no, sorry, Red Pill University to get the uh, the recordings of that uh, presentation that I had at uh, Mesquite, Nevada, um, where it went into great detail on how the social credit system worked. And I warned about, you know, they were talking about 5G in the, health implications i was warning about you know 5g will uh, I w i'm not so worried about the health implications i'm worried about the actual uh, totalitarianism that will definitely come with you know a massive interconnected internet of things system uh that basically could track trace everything in your house uh from like the electricity that you consume to uh to anything so they could basically say that oh uh tim you, you uh, met with that one guy that we don't like because we saw it on a, a facial recognition camera uh, and so like, you oh, one, the one guy you didn't like that really narrows it down because every single person i talk to is somebody you don't like so, <laughs> so. <laughs> no the, the, but but this is the thing is like actually in china if you're getting seen on a facial recognition camera they actually like if you have a higher uh high rate uh, you know uh, social credit you actually can get downgraded if you get seen it's like that um what was it called sideways or uh what, what was it called again the black mirror episode uh, i've never i've actually never seen any black mirror and i also canceled my cable last month uh so now I've, i think in two days will be exactly one month with no cable so you know here no, i am black mirror is very um black mirror is very interesting tim it's but you know what's funny is with black mirror they were all about totalitarianism they came out and said that oh we can't make any more videos because um any more episodes because of the uh, the insanity that is out there. And then they freaking, the, the founder, the guys that created, um, uh, was it uh, created, which one call it, um, the Black Mirror, 
they came out just recently uh, on the Insta, no, on the Instagram, on uh, Netflix with a. It was like for Bell. Rika is saying it's called Nosedive. Is the Black and it Mirror was like episode? A propaganda piece. Sorry. Nosedive is that the Black no, Mirror sorry, episode? Yeah, that's yeah, from. Thank go. you, Rika. Yeah, and that's exactly where we're heading towards, guys. It's it's nothing other than like a very similar type of system uh, that we're getting in, but because that's what they have in China. And so that's what's coming here as well. That's what the banks want. That's what everybody wants. The politicians want so they could control us uh, through a digital totalitarian technocratic system. Uh, so that's what's coming in. And you got to prepare yourself, you know, for that by, you know, have, being outside of that grid uh, with a lot of things. You can't, of course, be uh, on, on the like off the grid at every single given time unless you live in the middle of the forest. Uh, but you can protect yourself and have somewhat of a civil thing to survive you know uh, in my tim this is interesting in my presentation i warned about that the, the boston dynamic dogs will be used against you for facial recognition and all this stuff and and look at how they're suddenly being seen now in cities around the like in in quebec they saw them uh they were seen in new york as well patrolling uh, in Singapore, they use them to uh, tell people uh, to social distance and and and, and uh, wear a mask when they're out in the park. <laughs> you know the the, the, the insanity of uh, what's happening, and, and of course with Biden, this is going to go straight back to the U good old U.S. empire. But it's crumbling right now. So the, when any empire is crumbling, they usually go to war uh, on a very big scale. And and I I don't think it's going to be China. It's going to be Russia, Tim. Because uh, they they ever love up to China, of course. Uh, so you're gonna see a lot of craziness happening. I think over the next like four years, it's just gonna be both dark and insane. Uh, but I think it's also gonna be determined to find the people that actually, you know, want to have a better uh, world. And you could probably potentially uh, convince so many more people that because they, they're stuck in you know the uh, the rottest system that you know is around us. Uh, so I think there's going to be both dark and light sided, you know, even, even Biden comes out and says it's dark winter, you know, and, and everybody's saying that right now because they want to force us now with the new, uh, with, remember how I said when the minks got out, Tim, you know, this is just going to pop up somewhere and look at what they're doing in, in, uh, the, they're on the third lockdown in the UK right now because of the mutation, Tim. And, and so it's interesting a lot of the things that you see like how it basically plays out in real time like what do you think because you uh, me and tim we, like when we constantly look at these news and everything happening we also game play in our heads you know try to put a war game in our head you know what how are they going to do this how are they going to play this uh, because you got to put it in a sinister controlling technocratic way in your head and trying to make sense of you know what's coming next uh, and, and so that's what me and tim are trying to do for a lot of people is trying to uh, you know, see what the, the worst case scenarios could be of, you know, understanding what their beliefs are and then try, trying to kind of gameplay it out so it's uh, easier and give you guys a little bit of an insight so you can start doing research uh, uh, in a little bit of faster and better way instead of going through all the, uh, all the garbage that you have to dig through to, you know, first get to that point where you understand all this stuff. So we could point you into the right direction. So what is uh, what could happen and so on. So you could do your own research on all that topics. Yeah, exactly. I mean, always do your own research. I mean, I see, you know, there's a, a troll in the comments saying, you know, I hope no one listens to these clowns about crypto. You know, you know what? I ended up, uh, you know, at the very beginning, you know, outsmarted myself and many of the things in terms of, hey, this is, you know, a government psyop or this is, you know, going to be, you know, a mark of the beast type system. And blockchain technology is going to be used as a big as a mark of the beast type system. And it just depends course, on whether yeah. you're going to have the free version uh, and not free, but free as in, you know, uh, you know, open source, <laughs> decentralized, <laughs> decentralized. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, like the AOC coin. So if it's <laughs> and then we got someone else commenting, uh, if Bitcoin is overly regulated or made illegal, what is your plan and what signs would indicate the end of crypto who, in the U.S. retail like, investor? Think? Like, come on, like, uh, again, you know, like if you go and look at black markets around the world, when they have heavy taxation, most people like 25 uh, percent of transactions in Norway that they can't really track is being made by uh, cash under the table. Because yeah, there's something called decentralized cash. or DEXs where they are decentralized exchanges oh, yeah. that are run off by nobody. And so you can yeah. actually, you know, 
implement transactions where there's no centralized control in it. So sort of think of like a fidelity or, or something or like a Coinbase, but there's no actual, yeah. you know, kind of leader in charge and they can't shut it or, or stop it down. I'm sure there's oh, things no, they there's could so do to make it more difficult. Get around censorship, uh, and these are some of the smartest people on earth. Like you go to a crypto conference and it is all people with like 180. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, you get the scammers and you get all the shit coiners out there and you get people out there who are, you know, yeah, Nigerian, but there is Nigerian a very prince high type. quality of intellect uh, with a lot of the people. They're very, very smart people. Uh, you know, I have had. If they like, make it illegal, it's probably going yeah. to go up. And what I mean, technically, it's backed by math. So, yeah, I mean, guess what? I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah I, I could see them making math illegal. So I shouldn't say that because, you know, they are that fucking stupid that they could do something like that. But it would probably, guess what? Already 18 and a half million. And then if we, if we do something over here, it's not like everything depends on the U.S. I mean, China has a huge amount. I mean, Russia would well, welcome that news. They can make anything illegal. Come on, guys. Like, uh, what do you think? Like, yeah, that, you know, just because Bitcoin is being made illegal, like, they want to take your gold and silver. And, like, look at what they did in Zimbabwe. They put out the death. Uh, basically, you're charged by death if you actually use gold and silver in a transaction. Well, that's their desperate wish. But when, when people are not able to accept the fiat currency because it's worthless... They're going to go and do that anyways. And we're not saying put everything have. into crypto. No. I mean, if you have $1,000, your first $1,000 should probably be spent getting like storable food, you know, maybe getting some ammo, maybe getting some self-defense protection, you know, oh, you know, investing into knowledge, you know, learning different skills. So then that way you can use those skills to then make a living that's, you know, off the man's grid or not, or being able to work from, I guess now, I mean, a lot of people can work from home, but, you know, controlling your own income, you yeah. know, doing things like that, you know? So I think, you know, getting that under control or paying off debt, you know, that is a better use case if you have, you know, a thousand bucks then, than yeah, doing no, anything fire, else, you know, yeah. growing, being able to, you know, I have a tower garden where I can grow my own food and I've had it for like seven years and I just, you know, got it up again. But that's to me, you know, having that insurance is very valuable and something that I, you know, treasure. And so people are like, oh, we got someone in the comments saying, well, what happens if there's a, a blackout like there is in Pakistan? Well, if there's a blackout, your, your regular digital money, you're fucked too. So, I mean, so, and so, yeah. and then, I mean, so growing food would be important. Uh, One See, uh, this is another thing, having backups as well, you know, like I have, for example, a Trezor wallet, uh, which has like the actual wa uh, blockchain and my wallet and, and my currency is the, uh, like the Bitcoin and, and uh, b a couple other currencies that I have They've sent it there. through ham radio too. They've been able to do it through satellites. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, other... Yeah. So there's, there's solutions for anything. Like if, if you believe a paper that, wallet. You know, People are smart people and, and people find solutions to make this happen no matter what. And there's IPFS, you know, blockchains that are decentralized for storage and all that stuff. There, there's a lot of solutions come out. The more tyranny we get, and get pushed down that road, the more and more inventive people become because people will circumvent, you know, uh, those because it's mass inconvenience and they don't want to uh, have to deal with that. So people will 100% circumvent no matter what country you live in and the, the, the amount of totalitarianism you have. You always have black markets and everything. Well, I think so even, uh, I mean, not investment advice, but I even think something like owning gas mask in the future too, if they release, you know, some other uh, bioweapon uh, or they yeah. try to make gas masks illegal because, you know, right, you know, insurrectionists are at the Capitol doing stuff. I mean, who, I mean, I'm not saying to get them to have insurrection, I'm saying that I could see, I mean, just like I bought N95 masks in 2014 and now I get people lecturing me that I'm anti-science when I bought masks before they did and I wore a mask before they did in, in February and then I went on a plane without a mask in July so I mean I was probably the first one to both wear one and not wear one and so I get people who are lecturing me as they're wearing some bullshit little piece of, piece of cloth that they've probably been wearing for two months throwing it down you know on a table you know going and crumpling it back up putting it in their pocket <laughs> putting it back in their mouth fiddling with it breathing in all their own shit air constantly and then trying to tell me that I don't care when I'm doing things like constantly I mean, getting well over 100% of vitamin D every day probably a thousand percent vitamin C seven time Iron Man track athlete so you guys can go fuck yourselves trying to tell not the people listening to this but the people out there trying to tell me that i'm like anti-science and i don't know what to do when i've got some you know guy who probably graduated with, you know d degree over here you know trying to tell me that i don't know what i'm talking about when we've interviewed some of the top people in the world on these subjects oh, and it's just not, it's man. all a scam and it's and i love that video with carrie mullins who is who created yeah. the pcr test who absolutely excoriates fauci and is talking about how this guy is some administrative clown that doesn't know anything and that the PCR test should not be able to, should not be designed to be able to detect viruses. And this is the guy it's that made it. Happen. The guy that made it, who got the Nobel Peace Prize for it, 
And who then happened to die? He died of an pneumonia just uh, two months before COVID. Yeah, came so, out. yeah. August is your. I think August 2019. He ended yeah. up dying. So you know, August very coinc- very right? coincidental. Sort of like you know, Brandy Vaughn. You know, dies. You know, two days before Biax was re, re uh, you know reannounced to the market after uh, you know she was the main whistleblower on Biax. You know, but we're just crazy conspiracy theorists over here. You know, uh, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. And now, and now, I mean, he is probably the last person that will ever die of pneumonia because now nobody will die of pneumonia. This die of coronavirus uh, trust, or trust the pfizer plan trust the pfizer plan pfizer and uh, you know moderna and others have everything that they want for you yeah, good, williams then. knowledge of truth saying uh it's all a war for our minds and you know and alex jones was right when he said it was an info war and i had actually you know i had the podcast going back i think it was right you now it was a week trump won is when i started my podcast so basically exactly four years ago and it was hey listen you know we won and i say using we but it's like you know we won over here and this is not let's just go you know pound our chest and talk about how great everything is maga 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 is the real war is starting now and don't let your guard down and, and it immediately became oh q and on everyone go let their guard down there's a few guys who they know everything and don't worry we got it taken care of for you and it's just like oh my god like how dumb can people be that they can't see through this bullshit that you know anyone telling you to you know basically just always listen to the these you know cryptic messages that can be interpreted several ways to sunday and really kind of meet any path that you want to meet uh it's just yeah i mean i just hate you know sort of losing control over here but it's i just you know it's a desperate plea but you know but the thing is a lot of things are going really well in my own personal life so it's like i can't like it's like been like the best of times and like the worst of times like all yeah, at the no, same like, time i've been lucky as well you know I, and i work full time and then i also make money on the side through all this other stuff that i uh, that we do here uh, so there is you know like i'm not suffering whatsoever you know the, I'm putting aside a bunch of money as well. So, you know, me and Tim are really lucky because we're on the right side. But when you go and look around, like, uh, not in our family, but, like, with other people that I talk to, you know, their families are totally devastated. Uh, You know, the the hospitality industry here in Manitoba, it's just, like, whack. Like, there's people that have been without jobs now since March. um, And, you know, they're on moratoriums. There's a lot of debt problems that, you know, people have been have had to push out their debt because their banks allow them. I actually, uh, it's called Scotia uh, Bank, has called me like five times to ask if my $84 uh, camper <laughs> loan that I pay twice uh, twice annually, you know, uh, no, sorry, uh, biweekly, you know, if I can afford that. And <laughs> like, so there's definitely a lot of problems out there right now. Uh, but if you're on the right side of things, if you actually like understand what's happening and trying to position yourself, because especially Tim is, you know, trained to do that for you as a, uh, as a uh, financial. Planner. And I just made a lot of big changes, which is why, you know, yeah. we haven't done videos last week is because you know, at the start of the year, I'm taking a look at where I see kind of the tea leaves going and trying to basically invest for the end game. Cause it's, you know, at this, I'm not trying to invest in hey, how are things to look two months from now, six months from now, right now it's, it's getting a lot more aggressive, which is actually getting more conservative because we're, you know, trying to conserve, you know, way of life and yeah. your principle, but it, it's just, you know, we are sort of at this end game to see people over here saying, uh, somebody, I forgot what it is, but they said, you know, Alex Jones is a BS shill. And, you know, I stopped listening to him after 2016. <laughs> he did yeah. a lot of good that he did do. Uh, I thought that he was, you know, absolutely just shilling for Trump and it just became a Trump 24 seven circle jerk, but I had taken a break from making videos and I had come back for my mini retirement the day he got shadow banned and uh, not shadow banned when he got deleted off the platforms, because I saw yeah. that if, if everyone doesn't stand up for this right now, and you got a lot of libertarians cheering this on a lot of right wing people who are, oh, you know, me kind and of Josh cheering this on. as well. Like we said, like, well, if you laughing at him right now and you know, you, you're going to feel good about him being banned. You're gonna come after every single one of them. Yeah, I went and spent a lot like of the people that la- laughed too. Has I think I spent like five hundred bucks on his website that day. I mean, I probably spent thousands on his site over the years, and I spent I think five hundred that day, and I got like a shirt that said "We are all Alex Jones," and it wasn't to promote Alex Jones, but it was to promote the uh, basically. I bought some of uh, some of the survival food. I bought some of the vitamins. Yeah, I got some of the my Patriot as well. So yeah, yeah I got... no, it's. Uh... I had tangy uh, tangerine, I had a shitload of tangy tangerine at one point. I got the air purifiers, water purifiers, 
Oh, I mean, but now, I mean, I'm really pissed that he got rid of David Knight. And I mean, uh, David Knight, I think, was a guy that was a lot like you and me, a lot like people oh, really? who probably... Oh, really? I did not know that, Tim. He actually got rid of him. Yeah, yeah, so he got rid of him maybe about a week ago. And uh, actually, Josh did end up talking with David Knight after uh, after that. So uh, maybe we can have, you know, Josh kind of elaborate on this. But, you know, I always love the stuff David was talking about. And he was, you know, I think cut really from the same cloth as you and I and people probably watching this. And because, you know, yeah. he wasn't, you know, 100% Donald Trump 24-7 and dare criticize trump over you know warp <laughs> speed and some other things alex is like oh, oh you know, criticize we can't. the great supreme leader <laughs> like oh we can't uh, we can't afford him and then he spends you know millions of dollars on this you know trump event which uh and there i say thank you to zach in the comments who uh is posting a lot of really great links from other videos that we did also posting a link for carrie mullis calls out uh fauci being a fraud i think there was another carrie mullis uh pcr uh misuse video as well and then uh, an interview i did with dr andrew kaufman down at the red pill conference another one, I, yeah another one too tim uh, that everybody needs to uh, go and watch it said uh, del big tree has a guy called called uh, Sh- Satrit uh, Bhakti, I believe his name is. He's a virologist and uh, and one of the top doctors in Europe. Uh, and he actually, uh, you know, calls for, call it a crime um, and, and that it should be taken uh, to cr- a criminal court, um, this whole thing um, that's happening right now. Uh, because he, he does believe that, you know, that uh, this is a total crime to uh, an atrocity to actually put a vaccine that is, uh, uh, not, it's kind of in a trial, but when you actually go, the, this is funny. So you go and look at the Moderna, I went on and looked at the Moderna vaccine information, Tim, went on the website, I went and, go, went and looked at, you know, the both of the two different things that I could click on. Are you a vaccine provider or are you a uh, pr- uh, private person? So you go and click or are the you private a sheep? person. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, yeah, sheep should be more of the, but if you go and look at the private person, you actually see that there's nothing about that uh, the uh, Moderna vaccine has not been approved by the FDA. Um, you know, not that we trust that, but like it's actually not even approved by the FDA in, in the United States and most other places. It's just uh, being uh, given emergency. Actually, power Biden, Biden just came out and said that he's having like an emergency. You know, he's just going to release every single basically coronavirus vaccine day one so that is also getting changed but i do you know want to I, I think i do have to get going because i've got to go pick up my kids and my dog yeah. and uh you know i just want to be able to sneak this in and get you know enjoy some of the nice weather we have out here in the corona back-to-back coronavirus capital of the world phoenix arizona second time or i guess you know last year i mean so i think we had at one point had the worst in the world last year and now we're starting off 2021 being the worst in the world this year because you're so. hiding like right when you have the peaks you're hiding in your houses and your vitamin d levels are down so that's why people are getting sick like no, not necessarily from covid because these pcr tests are garbage you know here in manitoba it's 45 percent si- no 45 cycle threshold which it should be like even fauci himself that you know has been called a fraud for using the pcr test said that it's supposed to be 33 at the most or else you can throw them out so there you see, like, it's just beyond fraud perpetrated by a lot of these governments. And, and it's most of the medical elite, like the, the medical industry and, and the leaders here in Canada that are pushing politicians to actually implement curfews and everything. Uh, the, the whole thing with the lockdown here in Manitoba was pushed uh, first and foremost by the medical elite. You know, the people that are sitting in the administrations at the hospitals. Uh, pushing for this whole thing because they want a whole bunch of more money. Uh, so they're going to have to create this massive pandemic here uh, as well, you know, where uh, they're going to be finally funneled a crap ton of money. Uh, so, you, you know, it's, it's so interesting, Tim, like how everything plays out. But why would we trust Big Pharma that, you know, has... Uh, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of different times come out because they because they garbage. absolutely because they absolutely love us. But I do have to get going, so I think I want to you know let yeah. people know and, and definitely think. I think uh, we got one uh, negative on here, so probably the person that we called a troll in regards to cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Everyone gets butthurt about this, but guys, go to either timandjohnshow.com or the libertyadvisorshow.com. You'll get uh, a link to sign up for your email, also optional for phone numbers. So I, I actually have never actually sent out a blast text in regards to any of any of those shows that I've ever done. But you know, it's a good way to uh, you know reach other people. And then you go over here. We got you know we got places to work with. John, place to work with me. You can go to shows. We got it broken down between all different shows that we do. And we have, of course, the Tim and John show where you guys can get everything. And a lot of our best shows actually are not. 
actually, I'm signed in to some a different view, but a lot of our best shows actually are not uh, even up here because we've got controversial ones that have not that are t- been taken down from YouTube, and so we've got a lot of ones that we've shot, and then you know three weeks later, a month later, makes it up on YouTube, and so if you want to get it in real time, get it ahead of before everybody else, and eventually when we're kicked off YouTube, that yeah, you can find us, uh, you know, at the Liberty Advisor Show dot com at Tim and John Show dot com, where both there's also then links where you can then work directly with John, work directly with myself, and go to our uh, other websites as well. So definitely appreciate everyone who is watching this show uh wish it wasn't talking about so much bad stuff no, that was going on not, wish but... it wasn't talking about the end of uh free speech <laughs> and the end of the country and the but end it is of what my... it is what are we gonna do right tim there's uh, what there's it is no hope. No. <laughs> all right well definitely appreciate everybody uh thank you for listening to my rants also you guys can find this on a podcast mp3 version as well so let me just go back to tim and john show.com you go up to where it says connect and then you can go to watch watch will have you know like library and bit shoot and i don't know why my computer didn't take me there uh yeah it has this youtube channel but you guys are already there if you're listening to this you can uh listen and it has a whole bunch of different podcast feeds and so the podcast feeds are we've got uh you know i think there's a nice graphic that that Zach made for us. But yeah, we got Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Castbox, Overcast, and Pocketcast, and probably a whole bunch of other ones as well. So, anyways, you guys should definitely check that out because you know, don't always rely on us being here. I know we've mentioned it time and time and time again, but we will check off now because we've got 33 people watching. So it's a very Illuminati number for us to end this on. So maybe one person <laughs> can drop off. So that way we'll only be a 32nd degree Mason as opposed to 33. And uh, anyways, obviously we're, you know, we're joking with this, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, John, for, uh, for joining us. And thank you guys, everybody. Peace out. Never that, Gene.